My guest tonight is one of the most recorded songwriters in the history of country music. Are oh, you painted up your lips and rolled and curled your tinted hair? Ah, oh, Ruby, are you contemplating going out somewhere? He also has taken home seven Music City News Comedy Act of the Year awards, and he is one of the best singers and greatest entertainers in country music history, having received the CMA's Entertainer of the Year award in 1976. In addition, he has acted in a number of successful movies. Now, any one of those accomplishments would be deserving of praise by itself. Combined, they are extraordinary. And what makes his accomplishments even more extraordinary is that he had to overcome a less than ideal family situation and a very bad stutter. Please welcome the stuttering boy, Mel Tillis. Don't take the road. Thank you, buddy. Nice to have you. Have a seat. Oh, was you talking about me? Yes, I was. I thought you, I thought you were talking about Eddie Arm or <laughs> Willie Nelson or somebody. No, I was talking about you. <laughs> I want to, if, if I may start this interview, I'd like to talk about Ruby, which I suppose is your biggest copyright as a songwriter. And, yes. Correct? Right. That's a true story? Uh, yes. But I changed it up a little bit from the wars. Actually, I was coming home uh, uh, from the office one day from, uh, uh, from Cedarwood, uh, 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 which is a, a publishing company. And I had the radio on, and I was listening to the radio, and, and they had Johnny Cash singing, uh, don't take these guns to town, son, leave your guns mm -hmm. at home. And all of a sudden, I just said, Ruby, don't take your love to town. <laughs> And by the time I got home to Donaldson, I had the song in my head. And I came in the door. I said to my wife, I want you to hear a song. I reached and I got the guitar and I, uh, I sat down on the couch and I played her the whole song in its entirety. You mean you wrote it in the car? Yeah, in my head. And she said, that is the, is, is the awfulest song I've ever heard. <laughs> she said, are you serious about that? I said, well, I don't know, but, you know. And I got, I got to thinking, I said, well, maybe it isn't any good. I'm from a little town called Pahokee, Florida. And after the war, the big war, you know, all the soldiers were coming home. And a couple uh, uh, they moved in uh, uh, into the little apartment that was the nearest our, uh, 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 our house, the back end of our house. And this fella that was in the house, I don't want to mention his name, uh, he uh, had been hurt in the war, and he was in England, in a hospital in, in, Engl in, in England, and he met a nurse in England, and it, it fell in love with her, and he brought her to Pahokee. This was Ruby. And that was Ruby. That wasn't her name. Yeah, but I just use that name. Okay. And uh, and and they argued all the time. And uh, one time he went to the hospital at Lantana. They got a uh, they got a veterans. How long you say I show this show is? <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> they got a veterans uh, hospital there. And he went over there and they gave him a spinal and or something. You know, and temporarily he was paralyzed and he kept accusing her of all this stuff and uh, uh, and mother always said no she's a good woman she's a, a fine girl <laughs> but he kept accusing her of, of everything in the world and that's where I got the idea for he that he kept song. accusing her of fooling around with other men yeah that's right and finally she, you know she got accused enough and, and she'd put the rose in her hair and to paint them lips up and, Walk up and there's only one street in Pogue, and she'd walk up and down that street. So. <laughs> anyway, that's where the idea. All right, do, do the people in Pahokee, when they heard the song, did they, despite the fact that you changed her name, did they know who you were talking about? I don't think they did. All of, uh, 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 until I told them. <laughs> Melvin, I'm going to hit. What a, is it? <laughs> I dug something out of one of your uh, f fan club publications. 
It says, most often ask questions and most often given answers. Well, I don't pretend to give the answers on this show, but I will ask the same questions the way it was delivered in your fan club publication. So, do you really stutter? Am I supposed to answer that? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How did you begin stuttering? Well, you know, I think it was, I had malaria when I was about, oh, about three years old. And my mother, she said that I started after that. And before that, she said, I, you know, I could do pretty good. Actually, I think it's in my genes. I think it's, it's heredity. Because my daddy, he stuttered a, a little bit. My brother, bread man, Richard, he stutters a little bit. But on the girls, the girls on you have two sisters. my sisters, they don't stutter at all. Well, I was going to bring that up. I, I noticed in what I had read that, that Richard stuttered and your father stuttered. Did they eventually get over it? Well, about like I did, you know. <laughs> um, um, oh, boy, when we have a, a family reunion, <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd take my mama and, and my two sisters, it'd take them... It take them. It take them a month to figure out, you know, what we said. <laughs> Why don't you stutter when you sing? First of all, I know the song. I know the words, and then I have a rhythm there with it. So, I, and that helps you sing, you know. And I guess that's the reason. I know, I know my subject. And now, when I'm on stage, on, uh, on my show on stage. I hardly ever stutter at all anymore because I know what I'm going to say, you know. I've done it so much over and over and over and over and over. For all of you that have seen my show, uh, and the, uh, so what are you they doing? asked me in the autograph line. My name ain't through yet. <laughs> <laughs> they asked me in the autograph line. They said, I thought you stuttered. I said, well, I do. And they said, well, you didn't stutter up there. I said, well, I know what I'm going to say, you know. And they just can't hardly believe it. Have you ever been accused of managing the stuttering? Well, you know, I tell, I tell stories, and there are, are, uh, there are things like on stage, I, uh, I get hung up on something, and I look at the audience, and I say, am I going too fast for you? <laughs> uh, I mean, if, is, that, is that manipulating or what? Well. It might be. Yeah. Yeah, it show me. <laughs> You were born down in Tampa, Florida, weren't you? Tampa, Florida. Moved all over the state of Florida. Oh, Lord. We moved about 33 times when I was a little boy. So you were almost in a different school every year. Yep, almost every year. In our third grade, we went to a, a strawberry school. I went to Turkey Creek. What was strawberry school? A strawberry school, was, uh, you went to school in summertime. And in wintertime, you got to pick strawberries in our hope. Our whole family, we'd get out and we'd pick strawberries to make a, make a living. Where'd you go to high school? Pahokee High School. The Pahokee what? Blue Devils. Okay. And you played uh, on the football team, didn't you? You're right. Did you try to play I quarterback? I played halfback. Did you ever try I tried to play? out for quarterback, but I got stuttering in there and they penalized us too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too much time in the huddle, so there I am. Look at there. Now, this, this, is from, this is from your yearbook. This is Crazy Legs Tillis. Right. You were actually pretty good, weren't you? I wasn't bad. I could run. I could run. Couldn't talk, but I could run. <laughs> Last will and testament, your high school yearbook. Melvin Tillis leaves to Harkness Duncan his ingenious methods of skipping football practice. Did you do that? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, I was the best. How, how did you skip football practice? I didn't want to practice. I know, but how did you get out of it? I skipped. <laughs> well, didn't, the, didn't the coach get out? Oh, I'd have to run some laps and stuff, extra stuff like that, or, I, or, I, or I'd have to get up in front of uh, assembly and apologize. I, uh... That took all day. They love that when they get out of class. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you got out of, the, uh, got out of high school, and you tried college for a while, and you didn't, apparently didn't like it for whatever reason. Then you decided on the Air Force, didn't you? Well, I liked it. You know, oh, <laughs> Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the ears. <laughs> yeah, it looks like my son. 
<laughs> Looks like Sonny Boy. Yeah, it does. You uh, you went down to Lackland Air Force Base, and because you've got uh, you've got some experience with the National Guard, a little ROTC yeah. up at University of Florida. What did they do to you? Well, you know, uh, I was in Lackland, and I got sick. I had tonsillitis, and I was in the hospital for oh, uh, 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 two or three weeks, and I thought I was going to die. But all my all my buddies eight had finished and had graduated, and I got out of the hospital, and they put me in with another squad or flight. And and I finished in there. I finished my my graduation. And my orders hadn't come in, so uh, I hung around there for a month. Now wait a minute. You're uh, getting ahead of me. I want you. Well, I'm going to tell you. I want you to tell I me. I got ahead of. I got ahead of you. I ain't got there yet. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what I'm after. I'm after the, the day they made, they put you in charge of the flight and you had to make a march. Well, I ain't got there oh, yet. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> I graduated, or I finished, and my orders hadn't, hadn't arrived. And they made me an assistant, assistant TI, and they let me march him. Well, uh, the first time I marched him, they said, tell us you could, he said, uh, Take the troops to, uh, uh, to Chow Hall. I said, okay, boys, I got them out there. I got them all lined up, and I got them going. <laughs> and we got to the mess hall. I couldn't, I, I couldn't stop them. <laughs> <laughs> they marched right up against the mess hall and just piled on top of each other. <laughs> what was the word you were trying to think of? Halt! <laughs> I found out, I said, stop, damn you, stop! <laughs> Who was Buck Petty? I had been, you know, reading the book, uh, the country song, Roundup. And I noticed there was a, a, talent, a talent scout that had discovered a kid of uh, the name of Buddy Thompson. And he lived in Tampa. And his name was Honest, Honest John Petty, Buck Petty. Uh, at church one day, I was, uh, uh, I was uh, talking to my cousin, Bill McClellan. And he said, I know this Honest John. I said, you know him? He said, yeah. He, he said, uh, I know him real well. I said, can you get me an audition with him? He said, sure. And he did, and I went up to see him in Tampa. And he was out there, he, and he had a body shop. And he was out there, and he, and he had on shorts, and he had a, and he had a, oh, and he had a cigar. And I'm thinking to myself, and he was out there, and he was sanding the car down. It looked like hell. <laughs> Man, he was dirty, and I said, He's supposed to be a big time manager or talent. You know, I'm saying this, I'm saying this to myself. And I went over there anyway and I introduced myself. He said, Yeah, he said, uh, he said, I talked to Bill. He said that you were gonna, he said, I want you to be here tonight. He said, uh, I've got another kid who's coming over and um, and he's and, he, and he's got some song he's written. I'm gonna put him on the wall in sack, and then I'm going to Nashville. And, and, he, and he said that I could uh, that I could stay for supper. And I did, and I met this kid by the name of uh, Larry Kirby. Uh, he played his song on the little machine there, and I sat there and I listened to him. And I'd never written a song. And I listened to his song, and they, they weren't bad, you know. I said, boy, I wish I could do that, you know, in my head. And after we had our meal and everything, and, and uh, they let me play and sing, and, and I was scared to death. I couldn't hardly talk at all. I was so nervous, like I am now. And he said, well, he said, I think not, Mel. He said, I'm, I'm going to stick with uh, Larry. He's got his songs here, and, and I don't want to take on any more people. So I said, well, I'll tell you what, you, if you let me pay the way up there and back, uh, would you take me with you? And he said, well, yes. Uh, so, Lord, I went, and I worked, and I, I wrote me two or three little old songs they wasn't. It wasn't much. And I worked, I painted, I picked some strawberries, and, and I worked, 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 worked. And I came up here, and uh, 
and there was only three companies. Uh, uh, there was Cedarwood, Acuff, Rose, and, uh, uh, and Tree. Tree had about three songs, I think. I gave him one of my songs. I got on the, on the backside of Bebopalula. Were you really? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. I looked out on that. That would have been about 1955. Five feet of loving. Mel, I want to talk about one of the incidents in the, your early years in Nashville when someone hired you to work for Minnie Pearl in her band. Yeah, well, let, let's go back a little bit. When I finally decided to come to Nashville, I had had about three songs recorded, and both of them were hit songs, or all three of them were hit songs. I had another, another one by Carl Smith, uh, Why, Why. Why, why, cause I love you, that's why. Remember okay. that one? Yeah. And I figured that I had enough uh, 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 money that would be coming in in royalties that I could move up. And uh, I called Mr. Denny, and I got on as a, as a writer uh, at Cedarwood Publishing Company. And they paid me $50 a week. And uh, I don't think that Mr. Denny wanted to uh, 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 to pay that kind of money out. So he got me a job with, uh, with Minnie Pearl, and I was going to be the guitar player, the rhythm player. And she needed the fiddle player. Well, I had met a young man up at the Clarkson Hotel. He was a bellhop, and, and he, had, he had arrived in Nashville the same time I did. I got a job at Cedarwood, and he got a job at, at, the, Andrew, at the Andrew Jackson Hotel as, as a bellhop. And I had met him up there earlier, and he said he's a, a fiddle player from Amarillo, Texas. And I said, is that right? Yeah, I can play a fiddle. And anyway, I uh, found out that I, that I had got the job with Minnie, and she said, well, I need a fiddle player. And I said, I know where one is. And I ran all the way down uh, uh, from the old Cedarwood Company over by Candyland. It was, on, it, was on, it was on 7th Avenue. I ran down there to the coffee shop. He was in there, and he, and he had on his little old outfit. Who was in there? Roger Miller. Oh, that guy. Okay. Yeah. Roger Miller was in there, and I and I said you said you could. I said you said that you could say, uh, 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 could play a fiddle. I said, are you good enough to, uh, to play in a band? He said, yeah. And I said, well, you want a job? He said, with who? And I said, Minnie Pearl. I said, she, uh, she's going out for four months on the road, and she needs a, a band for fair dates. And he said, any port in a storm? I said, uh, and he took off out the door. I said, hey, I said, hey, where are you going? He said, I'm going to the Andrew, Andrew Jackson and give him my two minutes notice. <laughs> <laughs> and we got paid $18 a day. You and room and, uh, and expenses. Now, Mal, you, this was not your first time out on the road with a Nashville act. Hadn't you been out previous to this? I had been out with Duke of Paducah. But on the Duke show, you never said a word, did you? Not one word. How about on Minnie's show? Oh, uh, no, I didn't, I didn't, I mean, Minnie did all the talking, you know. But didn't she, didn't she recognize, I guess from something you said backstage. She let me, uh, uh, Minnie would let me sing a song, and I'd sing I'm Tired, you know, because I mean, that's all I had. Okay. And uh, I'd sing I'm Tired, and I had some songs that I had recorded for Columbia, too, at that time. You know, they didn't do much. First ones I had. I had it takes a word man to sing a word song, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, oh, I had case of the blues. It's my life. That's the way I am. Uh, and she said, Melvin. She said, you go out there and you talk to them people. You introduce your song and then at least thank them. I said, Minnie, I just can't do it. And she says, and she said, you do it. And she said, if they laugh, uh, she said, I'm sure they're laughing with you and not against you. And uh, and I tried it, you know, one day. I, you know, I tried to talk, you know, and they laughed, man, laughed, and, uh, and it felt good, you know. I said, man, they like that. <laughs> and, and she said, now, uh, 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 she always said, now, don't you step on your laughter. She said, it's too hard to get. You wait till they quit and then say something else if you can, you know. <laughs> and, and I, uh, uh, and Roger and I, we, we worked together with her for four months on the road, every day, every night. Roger and I 
I were her pets. Uh, they would let us fly on her plane. Uh, and they were just, you know, they're just like a mom and daddy to us, you know. And they made us behave ourselves. And, <laughs> and we'd entertain them, you know. Oh, good Lord, would we entertain them. And uh, he loved him to death. You remember a movie in the, uh, called Cannonball Run? Yes. Yeah. Who were you in the movie with? Well, I was, I was in two different movies. Okay, the first one. Oh, uh, I was on, on that with Terry Bradshaw. Uh-huh. <laughs> this guy right here you see on your screen. The fact is, I think I introduced you to Terry Bradshaw one time on Pop Goes the Country. Well, he's with us via satellite today. Terry, are you there? I'm here, Ralph. How you doing? Good. Where are you? Hey, Mel. Terry? Hey, ugly. <laughs> ugly. Boy, you got a lot of hair now, ain't you? Well, my hairstyle hasn't improved, and your talking hasn't improved a bit. <laughs> Terry, I've been sitting here listening to this math and laughing my head off. <laughs> I love you, buddy. How you doing, man? I miss man? you. How come? That time I was, I was with him. He threw me across my pool and busted my head. You remember I came on the show that night with my head yeah. busted open? <laughs> yeah, but the, Melvin, if, if you would look in the mirror and we stood side by side, you would know that you had to had something to drink for you to do something as stupid as to attack me from my blind side. <laughs> <laughs> and, with, and my natural my natural reaction when he did it, Ralph, I'm in, I'm in, his, in, in his pool <laughs> and I'm sitting out there, and all of a sudden, this little worm comes <laughs> bounding over and, and attacked me from the rear. And you don't ever attack an OX quarterback from the rear. And I panicked and took him and flung all 140 pounds of him. And he hit the edge of the pool, ripped his eye, I mean, wide open. <laughs> and he goes, oh, 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 no. I, I, I got I, I got the uh, ho hostess, uh, uh, show tonight. <laughs> and I said, well, you're in a lot of trouble, Jack. I mean, <laughs> it needed about 20 stitches. I've said, been watching you every Sunday. I, I'm enjoying you, man. Oh, you're lying. You ain't watched the show. Who are you kidding? I, 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 I you don't even it. get up in time to watch it. I watch it every time, horse. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm thrilled to death yeah, we that made a, you do. Oh. Uh, a pilot together. <laughs> a pilot. You know, you're the only guy to take a 20-minute show and make it a two-hour special. <laughs> what, we, what happened to your pilot? Well, it bit piled. <laughs> Real high. It piled. But we had a good what one. It was called it? The Stalkers. Okay. It was... Hal Needham directed it. And uh, I think Johnny we had many productions. How many episodes did we make? One? One. But we had Al Ruddy produced it, and he'd want to... Uh, Academy Award for The Godfather. We had that, Johnny Carson Productions. We had Albert Ruddy. We had Al Needham, the hottest director in Hollywood at yeah. the time. And off of Cannonball Run, they saw the chemistry between Mel and I, and they said, my, this is a perfect opportunity to take these two guys out of this movie and give them a pilot. This thing will be huge. Well, I was going to quit playing football, and I was counting all the money I was going to make, and Mel had already decided was he was going to get stuttering. speech lessons. He was going to quit stuttering. <laughs> we had it all made. We are going to get rid of the stuttering one, which was his king air, and get us a big old jet. Man, we were, it, was, it was a beautiful thought. And I'm, in, I'm down in Birmingham, Alabama at, at a golf tournament, and Ernest Borgnine came over and said, I understand your pilot's coming on tonight. And I said, yeah, it is, but I didn't want to watch it because I was too nervous, and I didn't want anybody to know it was coming on. And, I was and there. Come I to find there. out, nobody knew it came on, did they, Mel? No, nobody knew it. <laughs> and anyway, he said, can I come to your room and watch this pilot with you? And, well, this guy's won Academy Awards. And I thought, well, all right, fine with me. So we're sitting there, and we're watching this thing, and it was pitiful. It was horrible. <laughs> Mel and I were great, but was, this thing stunk. <laughs> and I, I'm sitting there, and the phone rings. Hello. I look over at Ernest, and he's going like, who is it? And I, and I hear this, uh, 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 I, I said, it's Melvin. 
And I waited and I waited. He tried and tried. He said, uh, well, he finally got it out. Well, uh, uh, well, uh, Hoff, it, 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 it sure wasn't no gone with the wind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I sure would like to see your little old skinny butt just slap you around, boy. Are they're you home? They're... Yeah, I'm in my backyard. Oh, all right. Where do you, Terry? Where... Actually, if that camera turns to the right, Troy Aikman lives right behind me there. That's uh, about my only claim to uh, fame uh, nowadays. Oh. <laughs> Hey, man, old Troy Aikman's got a, a long way to go to catch you. Well, he, uh, he's got two Super Bowls. I think he'll get, now that they've signed Dion for... I mean, you uh, have four, didn't you? Are you asking? Yeah. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. Four should have had two more, well, at least. Well, I already knew, but I want to, you know, I want to. <laughs> Paul says it's showbiz. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, you crazy as ever. <laughs> hey, if I Won't come you... up to Branson, can I sing a yeah. song with you? Uh-huh. You know, I put uh. him on one of my shows in Vegas, I think it was. I oh. put him on, and he was so scared, his leg was, his, his leg was, <laughs> was going like, and, and his face was jumping. <laughs> <laughs> but I put him on a stage at, where was it? Frontier Hotel. Yeah. Well, you made a record, didn't you? Yeah. yeah, I actually, uh, I, did, I did a record. You see, the key is if you win a Super Bowl, you automatically are qualified to sing country music. Oh. So, <laughs> after, I, after I won it, after we won our first Super Bowl, I had a bet with Tillman Franks that for, it's $100 that I could do, that I could sing country music, and that's how Jerry Kennedy over at Mercury Records, who was a Shreveport native, which is where I'm from, he brought me in to the studio and we put down an album in two hours and 15 minutes. <laughs> that's that's and, uh, why we had him on Pop Goes the Country. That's, that's right. That's Pop right. Goes Country to and I did Hee Haw. To promote All those his things album. that are... Do I? Uh, you were there to promote your album. Exactly. It hey, is this happen. my life story or is it his? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've... we've, we've <laughs> <laughs> he said, hey, is this my life? Oh, hey, it is. Hey, Terry, my satellite... I'm only answering his questions, Melvin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Terry, my satellite time is up. Thank you for being with us and, uh, and helping us salute Mel Tillis. Hey, welcome Thank back. You, Terry. It's we good to have you, you back. Hey, Mel, I love you, man. Okay, you come Come down us. this way. Come see me, will you? I sure will. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, 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 if you'll introduce me to that other quarterback, your neighbor down there. <laughs> I will. It's a done deal. <laughs> okay. Terry, Terry Bradshaw, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye, Terry. <laughs> Is that fun? Oh, yeah, man. That was a You uh, stopped along the way with Porter Wagner. You were on his television show for a while with Dolly Parton. Yeah. And then uh, Glenn Campbell called you to come out to Hollywood and become a regular on the Glenn Campbell Good Time Hour. Oh, yeah. Well, Porter fired me. <laughs> and then the next day, I get a call from Glenn Campbell. Uh, uh, so I, I, jumped, I jumped from syndication to network. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, as you were on uh, the Porter Wagner show when, when Dolly was there, weren't you? Yes. Well, thanks to Glenn Campbell, we're going to show you a couple of vignettes a couple of uh, routines you did with Glenn to give these people an idea of what you used to do on that show. So could we roll these, please? Mr. Campbell, uh, I'm the new tailor that you checked for. I understand that you want a new... Yes, I want wide lapels, a little flare on the bottoms, uh, maybe four button, double vent. Suit. Yes. Uh, excuse me, sir, but I am a census <laughs> taker, and I want to know your vital statistics. I want, to, I want to ask you some questions. Well, go right ahead. First of all, what is is your uh? Well, Glenn what? Campbell, I live at 306 Oakdale, and I'm married. Yes, I have three children. I'm a homeowner, and I have two automobiles. Name? <laughs> you 
had a lot of fun on that show. Oh, didn't you? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that make you an even bigger star? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know me in Australia, host. <laughs> Mel Tillis had a wonderful career, both writing and singing, and gradually he became a big star and made a lot of money. And in 1976, the Country Music Association made him their Entertainer of the Year. And I'm going to roll that tape in a moment. But I found out something in your book, and then I looked at the tape, and it fascinated me. Uh, I reread the book, Stuttering Boy, and, and it, I found out that the night you sat in that auditorium, you were smoking a pipe. Pipe. I never knew of any entertainer that sat in the middle of the grand old Opry house with a pipe in his mouth lit. Well, uh, I'm, me either. Why did you do that? <laughs> well, I was enjoying it. Well, but nobody asked you to put it out. No. In them days, you could do that. Anyway, as I understand it, once you won, that you came up. Well, you... I wasn't expecting, you know, or I wouldn't have had it in my hand. I wouldn't, you know, because I knew I wasn't going to win. I was up against uh, some pretty strong candidates. All right, but you stuck it inside your coat pocket. I stuck it in there. <laughs> What happened? Well, when I got up on stage and they handed me, I, I was just, you know, I was just you flabbergasted. And I got, I said, I've got the dumbest case of heartburn. <laughs> and I looked and it was just in, in smoke. <laughs> Boy. Now, now, you hit it very well. We're going to roll the tape. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful night in your life. It had to be had to be one of the greatest nights of your life. Mm. And I believe Tennessee Ernie Ford is on stage. So let's go back to that night at the Grand Ole Opry House at the Country Music Association <clears throat> Awards. The nominees for Entertainer of the Year are Waylon Jennings, Ronnie Millsap, <laughs> Willie Nelson, <laughs> Dolly Parton, Mel Tillis. For Entertainer of the Year, the winner is, and I love him, Mel Tillis. I think I'm gonna stutter. <laughs> uh, you know what? I. I, I, I want to go a long way uh, uh, back, and I'd like to uh, thank my aunt, uh, Eula Bell Tillis, in Pahokee, Florida, who uh, bought me my uh, first musical instrument, a fiddle, which I didn't uh, learn how to play it. <laughs> All I ever learned on it was hot cross buns and three blind mice. <laughs> but uh, I... I I do want to uh, thank her and especially my band that has been so, uh, 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 such a great uh, bunch of, you know, to work with. They, they good guys. <laughs> uh, also, also, it's, it's an awfully long uh, way from Pahokee. Florida to up here on this uh, stage at Grand Ole Opry, and I'd like to thank all of you for helping the old stuttering boy drive the bus. Thank you so much. I you. The thing that impressed me in, in researching your life was your tremendous work ethic. You've always worked very hard. I'm thinking about the time you, you bought a guitar from Richard, your brother, and uh, then you worked, went out and worked very hard to pay for it. it took you a long time. Oh, it? yeah, yeah. I mowed lawns. Uh, I sold worms. Earthworms, to fish bait, and I babysat. I'd go ask Miss York if I could have her lemons on her tree, and I'd, and she'd say yeah, and I'd, I'd, I'd pick her lemons and take them up to the, up to the drugstore and sell them. So I paid that guitar off. You had a hard time with your father, didn't you? Hard time convincing <laughs> him that, that you had the stuff it, it takes to be successful. Yeah, yeah, you know he. My dad was always, he worked hard, and he, uh, he, uh, and he wanted us to work hard. Well, I worked hard, but I didn't want to be a baker. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to be a singer. You can't make any money like that. 
And I won. I remember one time I, I won a, a talent uh, contest, and he was there. Mom didn't go. And I won, and I won. I won a, I won a freezer, and a, a bunch of groceries, and an easy chair. I think a radio, uh, uh, a phonograph. You know, played, wind it up. Mm -hmm. Won that, and some records. And uh, and he came, and he come home. He told Mama. He said, uh, "Well, maybe one." He said, "But the uh, little girl should have won it. She was a whole lot better than he was." <laughs> <laughs> Frustrating moment in your life. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but you no, know, I I just took it well, hell. But you, he finally came around near the end of his life, didn't he? Oh yeah, oh he yeah. He finally came around to to acknowledging what you had accomplished. Well, you know, I sent my airplane down there to pick him up. I had a King Air, and he uh, he came up. He stayed about a week with me out on the farm. And he just couldn't believe it. I just can't believe this. <laughs> and I felt so good about it, you know. And I wasn't, I wasn't doing it. I just wanted him, him to see what the, his stuttering boy had done, you know. We haven't talked about Detroit City. I guess next to Ruby, that's your biggest copyright. Yes. And you wrote that with Danny Dill. Right. So what's the story of Detroit City? <clears throat> I, I had written uh, 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 a song for Webb Pierce, and it, it turned out to be a big hit for Webb, and it, and it, it, called, and it, and it was called Tupelo, uh, uh, Tupelo County Jail. Did you write that? Yeah. I remember that song. And I was messing around with it, an idea, and I had a... Uh, I had a... Uh, uh, Right, right, Last night I went to sleep letter. in Tupelo County. Okay. I dreamed about the cotton fields back home. And, and I took it up to Owen. He said, we've had enough of the, of the jail songs and the county songs. He said, why don't you change it up? He said, write some of, about Detroit. You know, it's just out of his head, you know. I said, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> so I ran back down the street to Cedarwood, and I went into Webb's office. He was in there with Wayne Walker. And they'd been up all night, beard out. And I said, hey, boys, here's an idea for a song. I said, uh, I said, Owen likes it. No, Mel, we don't have time now. Can't you see that we're partying? <laughs> <laughs> so that's, so I, I said, that's okay, Peter. So I went downstairs, and I ran into Danny Deal. And I, I said, Danny, I said, I got the idea for a song here. He said, but let me hear it. I, I'm not doing anything, so I'll sing. I sung him, you know, what I had on it. He said, I kind of like that. So, in 15 minutes, we had the song. <laughs> by day, I make the cars. By night, I make the bars. You know, and it was, you know. Because Owen Bradley told you to write about Detroit. Yes. You've got this, this twin thing going, this twin career. A great songwriter. And certainly, I guess you could have made a living that way. But you're, you're uh, working, and you're out singing your songs. And I guess after Cap, you went to MGM Records. Is that right? I went to MGM with Jim Vino. Is that where you met? Who's Julie? Yeah, I did Julie. Yeah. And was that the first big hit? Oh. Uh, it was pretty close. Your life turned it that way, and that song were pretty close. And there you, you really, I guess, established Mel Tillis as a major country music singer. It but. It started after that, yes. Uh, that song, uh, it was during the convention, uh, uh, the disc jockey convention. In those days, it was called the disc jockey convention. It was down in the fall. Uh, uh, yes, and uh, a fellow by the name, uh, by, the name uh, uh, by the name Wayne Carson uh, Thompson, great songwriter. And, and he's from Springfield, Missouri, and and he had the song called "Who's Julie," and, and uh, I said, "Boy, oh boy!" I said, "I'm, I'm on, you know, I'm gonna take that to Roger Miller. Let me have it." So, oh, I, I gave, remember this story. I gave it to, uh, I mean, he gave it to me, and I, and I went, you know, looking for Roger. Roger had been up for a month. <laughs> <laughs> I finally found him up at the. 
at his uh, at his hotel. He said it was his. It wasn't. <laughs> the king of the road. Oh, he had a, a big suite, and his his bed. Uh, uh, was you know like this, right? You know like this. That pedestal here. Oh, uh, and it hung from the ceiling, and you could crawl under it, and and you wouldn't hit no legs or nothing. You know? <laughs> And I went up there, the door was open. I just eased it on over, and there he was in there asleep. And uh, I said, Roger, I tried every way in the world to get him up. I jumped up in there with him. <laughs> I hit him in the face. And I said, Roger, I got your hit song, boy. I got you. Oh, 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 oh. oh Roger, get, 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 get. And I, I couldn't get him awake, so I said, well, to hell with you. I'll just record it myself. <laughs> So, uh, so I recorded it, and it was, you know, it's my most requested it's song. A big song for you. <laughs> One of them, Who's You? What is Mel Tillis doing these days? Well, I got a theater in Branson, Missouri, and I do two shows a day. Uh, in September, I do two shows a day. Uh, uh, of six days a week. In October, I go, oh yeah, there it is. I go for seven days a week, and I do two shows a day for seven days a week. Sounds like a tough grind. Then what do you do? Well, I'm going sailing. D he got me a sailboat. I understand that when Burl Ives died, I know he was a good friend of yours. When he died, he left you his sailboat. He sure did. You know, I, I was surprised too. Oh, oh look at there. <laughs> Bless his heart. Where'd you find that? Oh, he dug around somewhere and found it. And there's, the boat. To, there's the boat. There's the boat. There's the, there's the sparrow. Old Burl and I used to go down to the Bahamas, you know. We'd sail around for uh, for a month, and I'd write I'd write songs. He recorded about. I remember one time we went down there to the Bahamas, at Abaco, and I wrote about eight, 18 clips of songs, and he cut every one of them. Uh, but. Uh, I, I went out to see him too, oh, uh, before he died, and uh, I went out to Washington State, and he told me, he said, "Mel, I want you to have my boat," and and I knew how much that he uh, 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 he loved the boat, and I had planned to put it in the lobby of the theater, you know, as a as as a monument to him or something, and uh, and and I told him, he said, "No, I want you to sail it," uh, so I. I went out and I hired me a, I hired me a, a teacher, you know, uh, 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 teach me how to sell it. His name uh, is Howard Phillips, and his wife. Uh, and uh, I've already been hit in the head with the boom. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and I do some fishing, at, you know, out on the lake on Table Rock. And I'm building a TV studio and also a recording studio at the theater. You've seen all the stuff there. Well, all that's going to be part of it. Well, I, I had much more to talk about, but I'm out of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to do an encore. <laughs> I ain't half got 30. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mel Tillis. Mel, thank you. Good job.